praise God Almighty. We give you all the glory, our King. We worship you, Lord, tonight. We thank you for your love and kindness. We thank you for your great grace. We thank you for the spirit from on high. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, be glorified, our God. Be thou exalted, our master, in the name that is above every other name, the wonderful name of Jesus. We pray for the mighty anointing of the Holy Ghost, the power of the spirit of the living. God, breath of the Almighty, breathe upon us, O oh God, breathe on us the breath of life. Even as we come together on this Wednesday night in this Bible study, let it be so that the Spirit of the living God come afresh upon us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we worship you. Our God, we glorify you. Our God, we honor you. Our God, we exalt you. Oh, Spirit of the living God. Oh, breath of the almighty God. Even tonight, we worship you. Tonight we gather on this platform. We gather, oh God, electronically. But we pray the spirit of the living God come forth in a dynamic way. In the name of Jesus, God of all grace and power, you are mighty. You are awesome. You are glorious. We worship you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. We exalt you, El Elyon, Ancient of Days, El Roy, the God and our Savior. There is no God like you. You are uncomparable. You cannot be equaled with anything. For you are higher. You are greater. You are more powerful. You are the great king. Mighty are you, our God, our Savior and our Redeemer. We worship you. We lift our hands. And we proclaim that our God you reign, our God you rule, our God you are mighty, our God you are awesome. In the name of Jesus, oh spirit of the living God, Ikaramasanda, spirit of the living God, breathe upon us the breath of life, rejuvenate us, oh God, this day in the name of Jesus. Give us a fresh anointing of your spirit and of your power. Rejuvenate us, O oh God, for your glory. And we pray this day, O oh God, that you will minister unto our life. You renew us. You will strengthen us. You will empower us. In the name of Jesus, we worship you, our God. We thank you, Lord. We glorify you. We honor you. We adore you, our King. Blessed be thy holy name. You are worthy, O God Almighty. You are worthy, our King. You are worthy, our Savior. You are worthy, our Redeemer. In the name of Jesus, we worship you, O God. We glorify thy name, for thou art worthy, thou art mighty, you are awesome, you are a great God, in the name of Jesus, he karamashatayamaha, mandarabakatayamasataya, makutatayaha, yandaramakushatatayaha, I bless your name. I worship you, God Almighty. We thank you. We are praying for our families right now. We pray that every family, by the power in the anointing of the Holy Ghost, uh, your spouse, your children, uh, those of you that have got children, I'm praying right now, let's come into agreement uh, for your family. I'm praying the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost uh, will be released. Uh, let it be so that your family, let them be restored. Those that 
that uh, have gone wayward, let them be restored. Uh, those that are sick in their body, let them be healed. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we are praying for the restoration. Uh, we are praying that God Almighty you strengthen uh, every family. I'm praying, oh God, uh, for these that are connected on this platform tonight uh, in this service. Uh, let there be an anointing uh, of the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, release of your power, release of your grace upon them. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we speak the blessing of the Lord uh, that make it rich uh, and add no sorrow. We speak tonight, uh, there will be no sorrow in your household, uh, but the blessing of the Almighty God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we pronounce tonight, uh, as we declare, uh, we speak the power of the blood. The blood prevails over every satanic, over every demonic power. The blood prevails. We speak, we speak a covering. We make a declaration in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the power of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, tonight there is a covering. We pray tonight upon our children, upon our household uh, that there is your hand. Uh, we proclaim in the name of Jesus uh, the power of the most high God. Uh, the anointing of God uh, is released in the name of Jesus. Uh, we speak right now. Uh, we proclaim the power of God. Uh, we proclaim the reigning of the spirit uh, of the living God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we proclaim by the power of the Lord uh, that even in this Bible study of your word. You will allow your word to prevail mightily in the name of Jesus. Open our ears and open our hearts that we shall hear the word of the Lord. We shall understand the word of God, the word of power, the word which is able to bring illumination, able to bring revelation, able to bring insight, able to bring foresight in the name of Jesus. We proclaim tonight uh, the power of God. We proclaim tonight uh, the visitation of the Almighty God. We proclaim tonight uh, the foresight uh, and the insight uh, and the wisdom uh, and the knowledge and the revelation uh, of the Most High God. We proclaim tonight uh, the Spirit of the Living God. Uh, breathe upon us. Uh, breathe upon us the breath of life. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, Father, we thank you uh, even as we come together tonight uh, that your spirit, your power, your glory, your grace uh, is abounding upon us. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we worship you, Lord. Uh, we glorify your name. Uh, we magnify you, uh, God of the armies of Israel. Uh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Uh, we thank you, Lord. Uh, we worship you, uh, O oh God Almighty. Oh Yes, Lord. Yes, for your love. Yes, for your grace. Yes, by your spirit. You are ministering to us and bringing rejuvenation. Those of you that feel weak in your body today, I pray the strength of the Most High God. God strengthens you. If you are feeling weak emotionally, I say the strength of God as we begin. Your mind must be in the right frame. In the name name of Jesus. Uh, your spirit uh, be in the right frame. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, emotionally be healed. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, receive strength tonight. Uh, receive rejuvenation tonight. Uh, receive it in the name of Jesus. Uh, receive it into your spirit. Uh, receive it into your heart. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I speak the blessing of the Lord uh, and I speak God's grace uh, be mighty upon you uh, this day by the power and the authority of the word of God uh, thank you Lord for touching her uh, thank you Lord for ministering uh, thank you Lord uh, even for coming through for us uh, in Jesus mighty and powerful name uh, we give God the praise uh, we thank the Lord uh, hallelujah hallelujah I would like to um, say tonight a warm welcome to everyone 
of you and uh, thank you so much for taking this time just to come on this platform and uh, be able to uh, be ministered to in the word of the Lord. I can see many of you that are connected already. Thank you for coming through. You can take somebody, let them know that we are already uh, ready to start our Bible study for today. And we've been doing a study around the, the spirit of the Lord. And also we're talking about, we last week we're talking about the uh, the Feast of Pentecost, and we looked at some aspects around that. So, would you let others know, share with them, and tell them that the Bible study is on, and we welcome you uh, from here. We are broadcasting from the church here, from Birmingham, England. We love and appreciate you, those of you that are in the United Kingdom, whether you're a member of CAA or a friend of CAA. We want to welcome you. Those of you in the United States, we welcome you as well. We thank you for coming on this platform to share with us in the word of the Lord. That is power in God's word. I want to spend a bit of time with you and um, and uh, I'll appreciate my time. And, and uh, we'll just an hour will do. So we we'll spend an hour with you. And uh, we believe God to help us as we will spend quality time together in studying the word of the Lord. And uh, as I always like to be timed, so they will give me a timer so I'm able to flow. And uh, let's flow together in the word of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Right. So uh, as we begin right now, we are going to uh, allow. So it, it's going to be flowing. It's, it's going to be an hour from now. And uh, we are trusting God together that we will be able to uh, do this study and let God's blessing just rest upon each and every one of us. I want us to consider tonight together. The book of John, John chapter 14, John chapter 14, and we'll consider uh, verse number 16. And John chapter 14, verse number 16. And these are the words of the Lord Jesus. He said, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but know ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you that's verse number 17 but look at verse number uh, 26 John 14 verse number 26 but the comforter which, which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And also when we consider John, uh, Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter number 2, that was our key text that we used last week. And uh, the Bible says, uh, verse 28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. So we, we, we were dealing with this subject last week, and I hope you can remember when we looked at, uh, uh, at one time I ministered a subject uh, entitled the upper room experience. And some of you kind of like were wanting to know more, but uh, we, we're going to combine some elements here today. I want us to recognize we have already looked at the book of Genesis and at how God made men from the dust of the ground. That's the outer part of men. But God, the scripture says, God breathed into the nostrils of the man 
and men became a living soul. That's in Genesis 2, verse number 7. God's breath. So men had, we, we owe our existence to the Almighty God. And Job uh, actually says, the spirit of the Lord had made me. That's the, the, how Job, to put it in Job chapter 33, he says, the spirit of the Lord had made me. By the breath of the almighty God, I, I exist. So Job now is describing to us the existence, and he talks not from the physical dimension, but from the spirit that he exists because of the breath of the almighty God. And we have seen throughout the history and the things that we have uh, studied in the last two weeks, uh, and as we spoke about the Feast of Pentecost, and we used the book of Joel, and in the book of Joel, so what uh, I was describing about the upper room experience, that though we have the day of Pentecost, which I explained last week, uh, fully coming, and uh, I explained what Pentecost means. But I want you to understand that the first Pentecost was actually when Adam had an experience of the power of God coming from heaven. When God had to breathe upon him and he became a living soul. So, like I say, we all, you owe our, your existence to the almighty God. He is the one that created us. Without the spirit of God, we literally can do nothing. If the spirit of God is taken outside of the body, the body becomes just a lifeless. Um, we, we become lifeless and we become just uh, uh, the dust of the ground. We are not effective. So that alone speaks not only from the uh, dimension of seeing it from the uh, beginning of time, but also to realize that uh, the, the, the body there, the body of Adam, is a metaphor of the body of Christ. It's the body of Christ. Or in other words, the body of Christ is... Uh, Without the spirit of God, we are lifeless. So tonight we want to just explore a little more around the spirit of God. Without the spirit of the living God, we are lifeless. So when you are, you and I, when we are born again, do you remember what Jesus said to Nicodemus, who was one of the rulers of the Pharisees who came to Jesus by night? Jesus said to him, in John 3, verse number uh, 3, he spoke to him. He said, a man must be born of water and of the spirit. And this was essential. Jesus said to explain to him the gospel. What is the born of water and born of the spirit? It speaks of the two kinds of birth. Being born of water and of the spirit, which is the baptisms. The two baptisms, the baptism of water and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So it is very important that you and I have to recognize, just like the man Adam, as he was lying down, being made or when God formed him from the dust of the ground. And he was lying there, and I've used this before, and I bring to your attention that Adam had all the members of his body, but none of them were functioning. So in other words, Adam had ears, and they couldn't hear. Adam had eyes, but they couldn't see. Adam had legs, but they couldn't move. His mobility was taken away. His sight was taken away. His ability to hear was taken when the spirit was absent Adam was not able to function until there was the upper room experience until God himself had to pour himself and had to breathe into his nostrils and Adam became a living soul so that's the type of the church that the church was uh, 
there was no life in the church. Or even when we gather together, those that gather together, even when they gather in the name of the Lord, unless the spirit of the living God be there, we become lifeless bodies. We are just dead. But it's when the spirit of the living God comes on, he is the one that brings life. The spirit brings life. And I want you to take note tonight. You must make those notes. The spirit brings life. The spirit rejuvenates. The spirit brings mobility. The spirit give, gives you sight. The ability to see. The ability to hear. The ability to comprehend. You can put all those points down. The ability to comprehend, the ability to sight, the ability to mobility, it all comes because the spirit has come. Without the spirit, there is no activity. Without the spirit of the living God, the body is there, but it's dysfunctioning, malfunctioning, because there is no spirit. But tonight, we want to bring to attention the need that all of us that come to the kingdom of God must recognize. So that's what Joel, as a prophet, was dealing with. He was dealing with the ending of time. And we spoke about how he spoke of the prayer. Because I said last week that prayer is so essential. You cannot afford to have. So you have to uh, put the scripture in your study today. Joel chapter 2. You cannot afford to do without prayer. Prayer is so vital. On Sunday here we had a mighty powerful message from Pastor Jules about uh, understanding setting up the altar. Whenever there is the altar, there is sacrifice. And when there is sacrifice, uh, there is going to be fire. Every altar has fire, has a sacrifice. And our altars burn today because we are in, we are prayerful people. We worship God. We make sacrifices of praises, sacrifices of worship. But tonight, it's very important that we must recognize that Joel, during his time, as he was led by the Spirit of the Lord, when it was time for the people to have a harvest, God had to speak through Joel that it was important that the ministers of the Lord, they had to come and pray and come and weep between the porch and the altar. They, they had to come and weep at the altar of God. They had to come and pour their hearts at the altar. So tonight as we are teaching one another, it is important and it is vital for you as a believer and as a Christian that you have your altar on fire for God. You have to have your altar and that altar is the place of your prayer, a place of your worship, the place where you sacrifice to God. We don't sacrifice like the old time people. We sacrifice through our worship. We sacrifice through our prayers. We sacrifice through our fasting. We sacrifice there's many other methods when we sacrifice before God. We lay, and the Bible also says we lay our bodies as a living sacrifice. So when we live a holy life or we choose to live a holy life, we are sacrificing. We are making a sacrifice. We say to certain things we're not going to go this way. We're not going to do things in this way. We are holy people. By so doing, we are sacrificing ourselves. We are laying ourselves on the altar of the almighty God. Say amen with me as we go alongside. So I want you to see here how then as we lay ourselves as a sacrifice, we open our hearts uh, to the flow of the power of God. So Joel then uh, starts to speak about restoration. And it's important that you recognize this, that uh, whenever there is uh, prayer, then there is going to be a response from the Almighty God. Prayer goes with the response. And prayer has been, last week I showed you how prayer was vital before the prophecy of Joel. And also when we compare and contrast Acts chapter 2, prayer was also vital before the fulfilling of the day of Pentecost. So prayer has always been a key and it is a key even right now. 
And God then sp began to speak to them about their flows, how their, their flows are going to be full of, the, they will be filled with wheat, there will be an overflow, and God spoke about restoration, and God said, I will restore to you the years, and this word is in my spirit today, so I will declare it right now in the name of Jesus, that there is people that are watching me tonight, and you're connected on this platform, and God says, I'm going to restore the years unto you. There's going to be many people that even today this is going to be one of our prayer points that you may have lost years. You may have lost time. God is a God who operates outside of time and he lives outside of time. If it's your word, I want you to receive it tonight because God says I will restore the years. The years that you may have lost. It may have been that time things happened around you and you lost lost time and you lost some years and you are seemingly thinking to yourself I'm behind everything is behind tonight receive the word of the Lord because God said I'm restoring in this season when we are talking about the spirit God has a way of restoring even the years the years that were devoured by the cankerworm and by the caterpillars thank you for those that are receiving receive it by faith tonight in Jesus name I proclaim it and it shall be so for you. It shall be so for your family and I want you to stand with me in faith right now and you speak in whatever area you are believing God. I believe in the active word. I believe in a word that is not just taught for information purposes but a word that will bring results and I believe tonight as I feel an edge in my spirit that God is going to restore some years unto people. He will restore your financial he will restore you even physically in your body. He will restore some years because he's done it before. He did it for Abraham. He did it for Sarah. He will do it for you. It's not too late with God because God is able to restore years. I want you to shout it there and to proclaim it. Uh, the restoration of years on my side. The restoration of years. The years that may have been taken. The years that I may have found myself uh, kind of like kicked out of the plan and the purposes or where I was disregarded. Let the Lord restore the years in Jesus' name. So he restored the years eaten by the locust, the cankerworm, the caterpillar, the palmerworm, the great army, which the Lord, and you shall eat in plenty. Receive that. You shall not lack in this season. In the name of the Lord Jesus, there will be no lack in this season. You shall eat in plenty. In other words, the supply chain of the Lord will come. This is what the Spirit of God does. He brings a supply chain. He doesn't, when doors are being shut and closed, the Lord opens them for you. He causes you. This is the operation of the spirit of the living God. And tonight we have come to make the proclamation. Let the channels of God be open. When men close their channels, let God open his by his mighty power. You shall eat in plenty. Verse number 26. And you shall be satisfied. There will be satisfaction. You shall be at peace in your heart. And praise the name of the Lord, your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. There is wonders of the Lord. And my people shall never be ashamed. That's your portion tonight. You will never be ashamed. I want you to shout it aloud to yourself. Type it if you will. I will never be ashamed. I will never be ashamed. I proclaim it again. I will never be ashamed because I'm walking with my God. Let it be a proclamation. Let it be a declaration of your heart in this Bible study. And so we see that God then says to, through Joel, he says, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. God will be known that he is in the midst because ultimately all that gets done must glorify God. God is the one that must take all the glory. He is the one that must be exalted above everything, everything we do. God must receive the praise. So he says through Joel, 
all the people will know that I am in the midst of Israel. Let God come through for you that everyone, that people will know, that people around you will testify that God is with you. How about that for this night? That it will be a testimony not for yourself only, but a testimony of all. A testimony, in this case, it was the nation of Israel. It was going to be a testimony of of the nations around. Every one of them, they were going to testify that God is in the midst of Israel. Let it be so, as God is working in this season, that everyone around you, even your family, even those that are around you, it will come to pass in the name of the Lord. I speak to you tonight as a man of God over your life in Jesus' name. And I say in the name of the Lord, it will come to pass that every Everyone around you and everything around you will testify. Watch and see these words come to pass. Everyone and everything around testify that God is in your midst and God is with you. Everyone. It's no longer you speaking and saying, oh, let me tell you, God is with me. And the people themselves shall testify that God is with you because he's a great God. You see, there'll be and known that I'm in the midst of Israel, I'm the Lord, your God is your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Yes, you pour out his spirit. Watch it there, that God says he will pour out the spirit. Pour it out. Pour out the Spirit. We are living in the days of the Spirit now. We are living in the days of the operation of the Spirit of the living God. We are living in the days when the Spirit of God is being poured out. This was a prophecy then, but we are living in the fulfillment. We are living when Pentecost is not just observed and fulfilled, but it is applied. There is application of Pentecost over our life. And the Bible says your sons and your daughters, they shall prophesy. In other words, we should be able to step into the giftings, into the operation. That's truly being a Bible, uh, a Bible believing in a Bible application, applying church, contemporary church that is moving in the prophetic anointing of God. And your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see vision. So now there'll be the visions of the Lord, there'll be the dreams of the Lord. These were prophecies that were spoken by prophet Joel and also upon your servants and upon your handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit so can I stop by there and say to you you also must be full of the Holy Ghost you must be full of the spirit of the Lord if God says I will pour out my spirit it means somebody must receive that pouring out. It means you, and I will not push it to somebody else. I will say it means I must be full of the Holy Ghost. I must be full of the Holy Ghost and be overflowing with the Holy Ghost. That's how God sees it. And God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So simple. Upon all flesh. Everyone. Everyone deserves to receive the Holy Ghost. And everyone can receive the Holy Spirit. And even during this time when you are at home, you can receive the Holy Ghost. You can receive the Holy Ghost in your house. You can be full of the Holy Spirit whilst you are in your house. Because remember, the Bible speaks about the baptism of which was done by John, which was baptism unto repentance, but also, Jesus says, uh, you will be baptized uh, with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. You will be baptized. Uh, and uh, John refers to us this way. He says, I baptize you with water unto repentance, uh, but there cometh a uh, one whose shoe latest I'm not worthy to untie. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. 
There is a Holy Ghost baptism and a fire baptism that is due unto God's people. Jesus Christ, when he come into the world, he came uh, to baptize us, to pour out uh, a fresh baptism to come upon us. And rather, when the Holy Spirit has come, he comes in to bring that baptism which was described by John and Jesus. The baptism of the Holy Ghost and the baptism of fire. And this must be longed for by every one of us. When the Holy Ghost is upon you, you will begin to do extraordinary things. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you will be able to do great exploits for the kingdom of God. And we're going to touch a little bit on that. But everyone, we must conclude what the Bible says. The Bible says, and upon my servants and upon my handmaids in those days. In other words, male and female, we all must receive the Holy Ghost the same way. And there is only one Holy Ghost. There is not two types of Holy Ghost. There is not Holy Ghost for males and Holy Ghost for females. There is only one Spirit of the living God and he comes upon us all. And I pray tonight you'll be hungry for the Holy Ghost. If you have the Holy Ghost, I pray tonight you go deeper with the Holy Ghost you have. You must be hungry for the spirit of the living God. You must be hungry for the upper room experience. Yes, not everybody is going to go to that upper room that Jesus went unto. Not everybody is going to go to Israel and go to Jerusalem. I've been there, been to that place. But let me tell you, before I got there, I had my upper room experience before I got there. Before I got to that building, that building stands now as a memorial, as a, as a reminder to us of what what God did, but God now, he, he is no longer just uh, saying I will do it only in Jerusalem, but he said this I'm doing it all over the world. I'm doing it wheresoever. Hearts are open. I, I will set up upper rooms everywhere. And tonight I'm praying, let there be an upper room that will be set up in your heart, uh, set up in your hands, uh, set up where you are. Why don't you say amen if you are believing with me, that you have your upper room experience of the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And so God says, I'll pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in the heaven. Watch there, wonders. When the Holy Ghost is poured, wonders, miracles and wonders. And you might, we might want to write this. You can never separate the outpouring of the spirit with miracles, signs and wonders. You cannot. Wherever there is the outpouring of the Spirit of God, there will be miracles, signs, and wonders. Because the, the very nature that the Holy Ghost has come down, he is just a miracle bringer. He brings miracles upon our life. And I want you to recognize that what that was prophesied. So last week we covered uh, how that which was prophesied is confirmed by Jesus here. In many ways, let's look at uh, a few examples when Jesus uh, confirmed in John chapter uh, John chapter 14. We touched that. He is, spoke to his own disciples and he said in verse 16, And I will pray the Father that he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you. That's the words of Jesus, another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Now we know that Jesus here was referring to the Holy Spirit. But he was also telling them about himself. Because as he came there, uh, he said, "You, the spirit of truth, the world does not know him. Because now he dwelleth with you. He is with you. But hence he was speaking about him ascending unto heaven. And he said, but the spirit of truth will not be uh, dwelling with you, but he shall be in you. 
And so it's another thing to recognize that in the Old Testament, the dealings of God, there was not much of an outpouring of the Spirit of the Lord. In the Old Testament, there was a handful of people who received of the Spirit of the Lord. When God wanted to give them a specific assignment, when he wanted to anoint them to do something, he then gave them his spirit. He put the spirit upon them. So it's important. The spirit rested upon them. But in the New Testament, God is doing a new thing altogether. In the New Testament, God is now coming to indwell human beings. Just like Adam, as he was dead, lying there, dead, unable to move, then God had to breathe into his nostrils. So the Ruach of God went into the body of Adam, and Adam became alive. So then Paul will teach us and will say, the first Adam, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. In other words, God breathed into his nostrils, and he became a living soul. Souls. That's 1 Corinthians 15 from verse number 45. He was made a living soul because of the breath of the Almighty God. But the Bible says the Lord from heaven, the, the, the last Adam is the Lord from heaven. He himself is a quickening spirit. He's a quickening spirit. He quickens those that have already been made a living soul. In other words, the first atom brings us to a chapter or to a dimension or to a level where we are living soul. We are just natural men. We are just ordinary natural men. But when the Lord from heaven cometh, he changes us. He transforms us. No wonder he takes us to a new dimension altogether. A dimension. We experience a new upper room. In this upper room we experience is the Lord from heaven. He comes upon us with the power of the Holy Ghost uh, and he baptizes us, changing us, transforming us, changing our innermost being. Uh, though we are alive physically, but there is a new rejuvenation that takes place uh, when the spirit of the living, I wish somebody was hearing me. I wish you are really understanding. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, when the spirit of the living God uh, now is no longer just the same way as Adam was who had the Ruach of God coming upon him. But now we have the Lord himself coming to indwell, to live inside of us, to live in you. That's why Paul then says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet it's not I, but it's Christ that now liveth in me. So in the New Testament, there is something that has happened to us. And what is that? The thing that has happened is now when we are born again, born again, we have received Christ into our life. He comes in. He dwells inside of us. No wonder the Bible also says when a man is in Christ, he is a new creation, a new species altogether, a new kind of species. We are different altogether. Why? Because we have been transformed and translated into the kingdom of God. We live in in the earth yet we are in the kingdom and for the kingdom and ambassadors of the kingdom we live inside this body but we don't live after the flesh or after the things of the body but we war in the spirit we do things in the spirit why all of a sudden we are in the body but don't belong of this earth we are in the body but we are elevated in the dimension of our operation but who, who elevated and what elevates us is the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope somebody you're understanding what I'm talking about. The spirit of the living God. Show me. I want to see that you're following with me. If you say an amen or press a heart something. I want to see that you're following with me. I want you to recognize that when the spirit of the living God. When God now comes the Lord who is the, the, the quickening spirit. He, he quickens us. We were dead in our trespasses. But when the Lord comes in. He quickens 
quickens us. He changes. He, the Bible speaks about the quickening of the mortal bodies. The mortal bodies that we have. He quickens them. He changes us. That while we live in the body, we don't operate like natural men. We become spiritual men that are spiritually led by the spirit of the living God. And it is so vital and it is so essential that you don't become, because some people, let me tell you something. You, you think about a, 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 a natural man. A natural man, let me explain three things, three kinds of men. Natural, carnal, and the spiritual. A natural man is somebody who is just born after the nature of the first Adam. It's just a, a, a normal, just born naturally as a human being. You are a natural man when you are a, an unconverted person whose spirit has never been converted. Their spirit is, the, is still in that degenerate state. In other words, the, we are likened or in likeness of the first man, Adam. If you are in that state, you are just a natural man. Now, this is the problem, and I hope you understand this very carefully. When you come to church, when you walk into a church building, <laughs> excuse me, you walk into a church building, or you, um, you profess to be a Christian, but you never move, you're never, your spirit is never regenerated by God, you remain a natural man. You, are, you can be walking into the church. You are a church goer, but you are not really transformed. There's been no transformation that has taken place in your life, if that's the case. So in other words, if you are, if you are a, a person who has not been regenerated, your spirit has not been regenerated, you remain a natural man. Let me give you a scripture that may help maybe explain that, I believe, 1 Corinthians um, chapter 2. <coughs> Let's look at chapter, 1 cha Corinthians chapter 2. And um, Let's consider this number, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse number 12, from verse 12. If together, 1 Corinthians chapter number um, 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. Okay, let's start from verse number 10. Um, right. Um, we we'll start from nine, nine. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, and neither had it entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. Watch it there. God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man? What man knoweth the things of a man? Save the spirit of the man which is in him. No man knows the things that are in my spirit or in me except the spirit of the man which is in him. Save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now, you, as I'm talking to you now, I don't know what is in your spirit except God reveals to me. But I wouldn't know what is in your spirit. And the same way you wouldn't know, the same way except God reveals. But what the scripture here says, it says, no man knows the things concerning an individual except the spirit of that person or the conscience of that particular person. So the same thing with God. 
No man knows the things of God except the Spirit of the Lord. So you cannot claim to know of the things of God outside of his Spirit. The Spirit of God is so vital, is so important because I can never know the things of God. No matter how I can, you can never really be, uh, be aware of the things of God except by the Spirit of God. Everything has to come by the Spirit of God. Now we have received, verse 12, not the spirit of the world, because there is the spirit of the world, and but the spirit which is of God. We, uh, you remember some weeks ago, I was teaching about the kingdoms, and I spoke about the kingdom of this world, and how Satan uh, sits in as the God of this world. And as the God of this world or the prince of the air, he sets up he has his own kingdom. But the Bible says we have not received the spirit of the world. So in other words, the spirit we receive is not the spirit of the devil. It's not the spirit of the God of this world, but the spirit which is of God. In other words, there is the spirit from the devil, but there is also the spirit of the living God, the one true spirit of the living God. But we, So verse 12, listen to verse 12. But we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So we have the spirit of God so that we may know, so that we may become aware. The spirit of God brings an awareness, the spirit of the living God. He will bring an awareness of the things that God has made available to his children. We are the children of God, but we will never know the things of God except by the spirit of the living God. L listen to verse 13, which things also we speak because God has revealed them to us. We speak them not in words which men's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, uh, comparing spiritual things uh, with spiritual. Uh, the, verse 14, listen to verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. The natural man, as long as you remain in your natural state, as a natural man, you cannot receive the things of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So a natural man cannot receive. When you talk the spiritual things to a natural man, the natural man say that's foolishness because his mind, his capacity, the dimension of his operation, he remains in the natural dimension. So now what we are trying to bring across tonight is for you and I to understand that becoming a child of God, it is necessary, it is of a great necessity that we receive of the Spirit of God to move us, to lift us up, to upgrade us. Being a natural man by itself is when you remain in your natural state, in your sinful state, in which you were born in without receiving the new birth experience. And when you stay in that state, the thing is, you miss out on the things that God has made available. You will never know them. You will never be aware of them. And if you don't know something, you cannot benefit from it. You cannot have access to it. So there are many sometimes Christians that come to church and they, they, they cheat themselves. And I pray tonight, God will help us. Don't cheat yourself by not receiving the Holy Ghost. And trying to do the spiritual things using the natural means. You can never succeed that way. You, you need the spirit in order to fulfill the spiritual things. Because the Bible says those things are foolishness to the natural man because they are spiritually discerned. And watch it. Verse 15. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. So we see two kinds of men there. We see the natural man, we see the spiritual man. But when you read the book of Romans, 
In the book of Romans chapter number 8, if we had more time, we'll do that, but I'll give it to you. Romans chapter number 8, particularly from verse number 5. You will see that the Bible speaks about the carnality, that a carnal mind, it is enmity unto God. A carnal mind cannot please God. Let, let's touch just one or one or two verses uh, in the book of Romans. Turn with me to the book of Romans and look at the 8th chapter. The book of Romans, chapter number uh, 8. Chapter 8, from verse number 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Now it's comparing those that are after the spirit and they that are after the flesh. It says, they that are after the flesh. This is the problem when you remain a natural person. Your mind will be after the things of the flesh. Your mind will never want to desire the things actually which are spiritual. Let me see if I can get also the Amplified and we can make a comparison of the scriptures and uh, so that we learn together. Romans chapter number 8 and uh, we will look at verse number 5. But I want us to see in verse number 5 says, For they that are after the flesh... Do mind the things of the flesh, but they, but they that are after the spirit, the things which are of the spirit. And let's look at from the Amplified. For those who are according to the flesh are controlled by its unholy desires set by their minds and on and pursue those things that gratify the flesh. That's the problem. Becoming or staying a natural person even when you claim you are a Christian. In other words, staying without the Holy Ghost will bring some of these problems. You're, you will be after the things of the flesh. And sometimes in the body of Christ, we have so many challenges sometimes that we deal with even amongst Christians in the church is because sometimes people refuse or ignorantly do not accept becoming or transforming to becoming a spiritual man or woman. That's what God desires. That's what God wants by giving us of his spirit is that we may be transformed so we can become spiritual people. We ought not to remain from in a natural state or a carnal state. Let me explain just another point. Because what is a carnal person? Carnality, carnality is being fleshly. A carnal person is one who, is, who professes to be a Christian, but their actions and their deeds, their, everything about their life is fleshly. They are just so much in the flesh, they don't recognize the things of the spirit. They are not up to the things of the spirit. They are up to something which is fleshly. When others are thinking about, let's do something which is spiritual, they have a desire and a craving for something that is more fleshly. So, be, that, that's being carnal. That's a, a carnal mind. And, and the Bible will, will tell us a little more here. That's a carnal mind that is driving that person crazy gratifying the things that are satisfying the flesh. A Christian who becomes a Christian goes to church, but their life, when they are finished with church, they are looking for a fleshly thing to fulfill and to desire. They can blame the devil all they like, but sometimes it's not just about the devil. It's about the carnality, the lack of spirituality in that person. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to make an appeal today. We need the spirit of the living God. You and I need the Holy Ghost more than you think. It's not just for tongue talking. Tongue talking is a sign to tell you or to signify to all and to you that you have received of the Spirit. But thereafter you got to go beyond tongue talking. You ought to go to a time where the Spirit of the Lord, the fruit of the Spirit comes alive in you. You start to live as a child of the living God. You don't need nobody to police you. You don't need nobody to be checking you whether you're doing or those that demand somebody 
somebody must be checking on me, otherwise I fall back. Well, you don't have the spirit. That's why you have that problem. If you have the spirit of the living God, even when you're on your own, the spirit will work in you. The spirit will guide you. Yes, I'm not taking away the power of corporate worship. Corporate worship is important, but at the same time, you can be on fire for God right there in your home. You can be on fire for God. We're almost going three months now with no church gatherings coming on, but your, your fire, my fire has not gone out. My fire is still going forth. You, you, you need to know that the, your fire is not dependent on corporate gathering. Your fire must be dependent on the fire of God that's burning inside of you in Jesus' name. Not to disregard. When church, when they allow church to gather, you have to come to church. You have to gather with others. You need that corporate worship. But beyond that, I need the spirit of the living God to be inside of my life. I need the spirit to help me, to refresh me, and to empower me every day. But look at what the Bible says. But those who are, according to the spirit, are controlled by the desires of the spirit, set their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. And look at verse number, look at with me verse number six. For to be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded, it kills you. You become dead, but not dead physically. You are dead spiritually. To be carnally minded is to, is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. When you are spiritually minded, when your mind is spiritually alert, your mind is sensitive to the things of the spirit, you are, it brings life, it brings peace unto you. Let's look at it from the Amplified. The Amplified says, now the mind of the flesh which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I like how the, the Amplified puts it. It says, that now the mind of the flesh, the carnal mind. What is a carnal mind? The Amplified says, it is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. It's when our thinking is not submitted to the Holy Spirit. It's when our way of uh, organizing ourselves and doing things, that's why we're talking about having a real upper room experience. When you really have a, an upper room experience, it's your, your upstairs must have an experience. Your mind must be changed, must be transformed. It cannot be upper room when my mind is contrary to the things of God. There has to be a renewing that takes place upstairs here in upper room so my senses my reasoning must be submitted to the authority of the spirit of the living God my thoughts even it will be seen with the words that come out of your mouth because the Bible says the out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh if your mouth is so foul if your mouth is full of vulgar and rough words it shows inside of your spirit something is wrong when I'm still foul when I can still swear and speak very bad things and out of the abundance of the the heart the mouth is just a messenger. The mouth is just a vessel that's just pouring out what's coming out of our heart. And I hope we're learning something here today. When you have become a Christian and you have, our life has been changed, we have to guard what comes out of our mouth. But really saying guard what comes out of our mouth means we have to guard our heart. My heart must be guarded. How do I guard my heart? My heart uh, receives from my mind. My mind must be submitted to the Holy Spirit. Must be submitted. But the Spirit is submitted to the Word of God and the things that it gets from above. So in other words, I must submit myself. You must submit yourself constantly to the Word of God. Constantly.
constantly to the spirit or you yield to the spirit of God on a daily basis. You wake up, yield to the spirit of God. Yield to the word of God. Yield your reasoning. Yield your capacity of understanding to the word of God. And as you do so, you allow the spirit of the living God uh, to operate and to control. All of a sudden, you will no longer do things that are fleshly. Your decisions won't be fleshly. The carnality will be driven away. I hope I'm helping somebody tonight. Carnality will be driven away from you. You won't become a carnal Christian. You will become a Christian who is so alive to the things of God. Why? You're alive to the spirit. You're alive to the word of God. So, let's read it again. Verse number 6. The Bible says, and the, now the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit is death. Death that comprises all the miseries arising from sin. There is misery that come with carnality. The more carnal you are, the more miserable you are. You become a miserable person. Both here and hereafter. But the mind of the Holy Spirit <coughs> is life and soul and peace both now and forever. I want you to understand what I was trying to explain here is a natural man, one who is not subject to the things of God, not subject to the spirit of God, not subject when the things of God come, foolishness to them. When he hears of the things of the spirit of God, they are foolishness. That's a natural man. Now, the, the, the problem and the truth, and you, you may not like this, some of you, we have people in the church that are just natural men. And some of them, they're just natural men, natural women, never been converted, no conversion been taken place. Yes, they can say Jesus. Yes, they walk to church, but they are natural. Then we have another group that is just carnal. They are professing Christians. They have prayed the sinner's prayer so, and they've done all those things and even being baptized. Think of Simon the sorcerer. He was baptized when Philip was preaching, but he was still unconverted. He was still unrepented. He still wanted to buy the gift of God. He was baptized in the name of Jesus. Right baptism for that matter. But he had not yet received the Holy Ghost. So in the state of him having come to church, him being baptized, he was still a carnal man. When he saw these men laying hands and people receiving the Holy Ghost, he had envy in his heart. He, he desired, he said, uh, if these men leave and go back to Jerusalem, my business, which he used to do, bewitching all the people of Samaria, he saw that now this will all be gone. And he said, how can, I, how can you sell me what you have? Let me give you money. Let me purchase what you have. And, uh, and what did Peter say? He said, let you and your money perish together. Because he saw, he says, I see and I perceive that you are in a gall of bitterness. That's why when, when you are a Christian and you are full of bitterness and anger and malice and all such, it's a sign that the Christian is carnal. The so-called Christian is carnal. He lives a very carnal life. Let the Lord help us. But now I'm going to the dimension now. What, what do I need to do? You say to yourself, what do I need to do? We need to be spiritual. We need to receive of the spirit of God. But not only receive for the purpose of statistics. So that you, you say to yourself, no, I, I got the Holy Ghost. And, and I, I rejoice when someone says, oh, we baptized that fellow. And he just came out and he was speaking in tongues. We got one more to be baptized. That, that's fine. That, that's, to me, that's the beginning of the process. Has the person now received the Holy Ghost? They have to leave under the leading and the power of the Holy Spirit and demonstrate the life of spirituality, then we are truly have won a soul. Then we are in a process of discipleship. Then we have somebody that, will, that has been converted, transformed, and will transform others. People that are never become that are never spiritual can never make an impact on other people. Carnal Christians, in fact, carnal Christians, they 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 cause so much.
such havoc even in the church. They cause havoc because their carnality rules more than the spirituality. But I'm praying with you this day in the name of Jesus that God will help you and I. It's a time that we may seek the Lord. I need to be spiritual. You and I need to be a spiritual man, a spiritual woman that can know the things of the spirit. When you are a spiritual man and a spiritual woman, you guard even things that come out of your mouth. You don't just think and, and say something. No, you digest something. You process it. You look at its impact. You, you analyze. That's, that's spirituality. And others will call it maturity. That's fine. The spirit will make you mature. You will see a younger person who is more mature uh, than somebody who may be older because they have received the spirit. They have yielded to the spirit of the Lord. They have yielded to the guiding of God's word. And the word of God is molding them, maturing them, helping them to display a higher dimension of maturity. It's a dimension of the spirit of the Lord. So our God, he makes us, and I pray that let God help us mature us, mature our way of doing things, mature our thinking, mature, even mature my writing, my articles, my, my thing, the way I express myself, even on social media, on every way, maturity must be displayed in the name of the Lord to glorify God. Because sometimes uh, some people claim to be mature, but in their claim to be mature, the, the way they write, the way they present themselves, the way they say it all, it it, it just uh, betrays it all, betrays uh, their claim of maturity. So the power of the Holy Spirit, as I'm going to close in a minute, the spirit of the living God is to come to all. So that's the conclusion of it. The spirit of the living God, jo Joel said in the last days, uh, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. You may say to yourself, "How? what do I do when I'm still natural? What do I do when I'm so can I've told you already first and foremost you need to receive of the Holy Ghost. You need to have a genuine hunger for the Holy Spirit. Don't just be uh, moving with the crowd. No, you have a genuine hunger for the Spirit of the living God. You want to see changes in your life? You want to see the manifestation of the glory of God? There is no shortcut. When it's a genuine move of God you want your church to have a genuine move of God? There is no shortcut. People must receive the Holy Ghost. Everybody from CAA, I'm saying to you, you cannot go any other way. We cannot have any other shortcut. You have to receive of the baptism. Young man, you have to receive of the Holy Ghost. Young lady, you have to receive of the Holy Ghost. Elderly mothers, elderly fathers, you have to receive of the Spirit of the living God. You got to be full of the Spirit of God. Be baptized and I pray with you that even this week, even while I'm talking, when this broadcast is finished, or even now as I'm talking, you can thrust your hands in the air and say, Lord, what this man of God is talking about, I need it in my life. I need the Holy Ghost. And God will baptize you with the spirit of the living God. You can lift your hands. You can cry out and say, I need the Holy Ghost like never before. The church of the living God, we Without the spirit is empty. Without the spirit is powerless. Without the spirit there is no sight. Without the spirit there is no hearing from the Lord. Without the spirit there is no foresight. There is no insight. Your prayers without the spirit are empty. We know not what we ought to pray for. But the spirit helpeth us in our infirmities. For he prayeth for us according to the will of God. When we are praying with the Holy Ghost, we pray the will of God. Oh, beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. We praying in the Holy Ghost. The church must pray in the Holy Ghost. Leaders must pray in the Holy Ghost. Saints must pray in the Holy Ghost. I train leaders and I say to every person
person who serves. Whether you are an usher in the church, you are to have the Holy Ghost because somebody is going to walk in the church uh, coming to do harm or carrying something uh, that is not right. The usher must be full of the Holy Ghost. Gone are the days where ushering had to be put in people that just don't know that or something like that. The ushering responsibility is not something. That's why they called it uh, the doorkeeper. The doorkeepers of the old time were people of renown statue. They had the power. That's why David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. He was saying, I'd rather be an usher in the house of the Lord, standing at the door. But I want you to recognize that every usher needs to be like David, anointed like David. Every usher must lay the giants at the door. When the people are coming in, the ushers be full of the power of the Holy Ghost. Not to mention preachers. A preacher without the spirit of the Lord is just an informer. He's just a literal informer or a low lecturer who tries to lecture in the house which is meant to be spiritual. Without the spirit of God, ah, there is no church. Ushers must have the Holy Ghost. Preachers must have the Holy Ghost. Singers must have the Holy Ghost. How do you dare stand and sing without the Holy Spirit? If you don't have the Holy Ghost, how do you sing the songs of Zion? How do you sing the songs of the Spirit? How do you become spiritual? How do you sing to those that have the Spirit as we do in our days? We say we have but praise singers that lead us. How can you lead people where you have never been? How can you lead others to the dimension of the presence and the glory and the power of God and you haven't been yourself? Help me somebody to understand that. But I simply don't understand how do I lead if I don't have the Holy Ghost myself? How do I lead a church that has to go to the spirit of the living God? Every leader must have the Holy Ghost. No chance. That's why I tell people I'm part of the prayer. I'm part of the intercessory group. I don't let others intercede and I just walk in to preach. I intercede. I pray because that's where we get all our power. I'm closing with this. The time is now that you and I ought to have the Holy Ghost. Everybody must be full of the spirit of the living God. It's not for them that stand there. It's not the tongues are not for a few. But the Bible says praying in the spirit. The whole church. You say to me. Paul said we cannot all speak in tongues. You get it wrong. He never said that. What Paul was talking about was the distinction between talking in other tongues and the operation of the gift of diverse kinds of tongues. So you don't misinterpret that scripture. What was he talking about? When there is a diverse kinds of tongues, they need interpretation. So one can talk and we can talk one after the other. That's diverse kinds of tongues. That's the operation of a gift. But when we are speaking with other tongues, the whole church, what happened on the day of Pentecost? They were all assembled together in one place. Over 120 of them. The Bible says suddenly there was a sound as of a mighty rushing wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there were, there were cloven tongues and they, they, we saw as of, as of fire and it set upon each one of them and the Bible says the fire of God was revealed upon every one of them and they all began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them the utterance every one of them so all 120 of them in a room they were talking with other tongues so all of you some of the churches are just 50 members 100 members you can all talk in tongues as the Holy Ghost gives you the utterance you can all pray in the spirit you can all be full of the Holy Ghost there are some deceivers that will want you to have this mindset that we cannot all talk in tongues yes we can 
sign. That's how the church was founded. It was talking in tongues. It was filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. You ought to be full of the Spirit. Church, be full of the Holy Ghost. Leaders, be full of the Holy Ghost. Singers, be full of the Holy Ghost. Admin people, be full of the Holy Ghost. Media people, be full of the Holy Ghost. Ashes, musicians, be full of the Holy Ghost. David was full of the Holy Ghost. David was a musician, but full of the Spirit of the Lord. No wonder the Bible says when he played the harp, demons departed from soul. When you're full of the Holy Ghost, even when you play the keys, when you play that instrument, when you play that drum, devils will leave and go because they recognize the power of the Holy Ghost. I charge you today in the name of Jesus. This is what we are talking about. The true Pentecost of the hour. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Spirit of the Lord. Be full of the Holy Ghost. Jesus went out in the power of the Spirit, but he returned full of the Holy Ghost. We must be full of the Spirit of the Lord. Pray with me right now in Jesus' name as we proclaim by the power of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now, even for these, oh God, that are connected in the name of the Lord, I pray with you. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall afresh on you. In the name of Jesus, if you haven't received the Holy Ghost, you lift up your hands in your house. The power of God, I believe I have faith enough to believe you can receive the Holy Ghost because my Bible tells me, my God said, in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Join me. Don't just watch but join me now. Join me now. Lift up those holy hands. You say, Holy Ghost, come upon me in a fresh way. In the name of Jesus, I speak for the name power for the power of God let the name of Jesus be glorified in the name of the Lord Jesus I command that receive the power of the Holy Ghost receive the fresh fire even the Holy Ghost comes on you devils will leave demons will leave you they will not camp in your house they will not camp in your children they will not camp in your spouse the fire of God. Gone are the days where we can just come for the sake of coming. But gone are the days where the fire of God had to belong to the leaders. The church, our children, must be full of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. I pray with you tonight in the name of Jesus. Receive. Rakua Shataya, receive tonight. Uh, receive a baptism uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, receive a baptism uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, in the name of Jesus, lift those hands. Uh, open your mouth and ask God. Uh, you tell Him, Lord, uh, fill me uh, with the Holy Ghost. Uh, fill me uh, with your Spirit. Uh, fill me. Uh, I receive, baptize me uh, with the Holy Ghost. Uh, I don't want to be a carnal man. I don't want to be a carnal woman. I want to be a spirit filled woman. I want to be a spirit filled man. I want to be full of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The fire of God burning my soul. The fire of God. Just like I'm feeling it here. Let that fire come. Jesus said these words on that great day of the feast. When they finished the feast of tabernacles he stood on that day and the bible says he said if any man is thirsty let him come unto me oh and now let I give him a drink and out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water rivers of living water it 
it is the time now. There ought to be rivers of living water coming your way. In the name of Jesus, let there be a river of living water bubbling out of your soul. In the name of Jesus, let the spirit of the living God, let that fire burn. Let that fire work in you. Let that fire of the spirit of the living God be upon you in Jesus' name. I proclaim, be healed as the spirit comes on you. Be delivered as the spirit comes on you. I speak deliverance. I speak miracles, signs and wonders. Be done as the spirit of God comes on you. In the name of Jesus, let miracles, let signs, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They will take on serpents or they will be able to crumble and stand upon them. The Bible also says they will speak with other tongues or as the Spirit of God comes on them. I speak upon you in the name of Jesus. You are a believer but be full of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hakatayama satayama. Yes, yes, Lord. Receive it in Jesus' name. I want to pray for some people right now. I want to pray for some individuals here. I want to pray for you. If you want me to pray with you in Jesus' mighty name. I want to pray over your life. I proclaim God's blessing right now. The Holy Ghost is coming on you. The Holy Spirit is coming on you. I feel the fire of God right now. I feel the fire of God in this house. In the name of Jesus. Let me tell you when the Spirit of God is operating. You don't need to be here for me to know what's going in your life. The Spirit of God brings revelation. You can be in your house and God will give a name and tell them and be bring forth revelation. He's a powerful God. He's a mighty God. He can deal with things by his might. He can heal your body. He can rejuvenate you. When the Spirit begins to operate, there is no distance. You cannot tell me I'm too far. You can't see what's going on. When the Spirit begins to operate, when eyes are open, ears are open, we hear from the Lord, we see in the Spirit, we perceive by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I proclaim on you, every person who is watching, I speak upon you, the power of God come on you, the anointing come on you, the grace of God come on you, receive in Jesus' name, receive everybody by the power of the Lord, I speak speak upon you, those of you uh, that are connected, uh, Sister Muslim, receive uh, a blessing from the Lord, I proclaim uh, in Jesus' mighty name uh, I loose upon you I loose the blessing of the Lord I proclaim, call, call upon the name of the Lord with me right now, let's proclaim it, let's proclaim it, uh, in the name of Jesus, I uh, let God touch you, Sister Gabriel. In the name of Jesus, I lose the blessing of the Lord. I release the blessing of God upon you. Receive it right now. The fire of God. God's fire is coming your way. In the name of Jesus, come on, pray with me right now. The power of God, the fire of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, the fire baptism. The fire baptism. The fire baptism. The fire baptism. The fire baptism Tonight, in the name of Jesus, receive a fresh fire. Receive a fresh fire. Some of you, fire is coming on you. I speak the fire of God in the name of Jesus. You can feel it is flowing over your body right now. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. I lose it. I lose it in Jesus' name. The spirit of the living God. As you lift your hands, God's power is released. In the name of Jesus, 
walk in that grace. I proclaim upon you in Jesus' mighty name. I proclaim the grace of God. Be healed, be made whole. Where there is that pain, lay your hand there. We rebuke that sickness right now. Call in Jesus' name. Every devil that has come to attack you, we rebuke you, we command you to go right now. Out of your home, out of your workplace, in the name of Jesus, out of your path right now. I speak the protection of the Lord and I proclaim it is well with you in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. The glory and the power of God is upon you in Jesus' name. Glory and honor and power and majesty. I just feel an anointing of the Holy Ghost. I feel such an anointing from this house. Let it be released upon you as you receive it, as you receive God's grace in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to walk in grace. If you want to call me for prayer, I will take those prayer calls um, tonight. And just for a couple of minutes, you have the number. And uh, some of you, my sons and daughters, please put that number on there. You call it straight after this, and uh, I can be able to pray with you. I'll just open up the line for a few minutes. If you want to support the church tonight, we encourage everyone to please uh, go ahead. Say a members on your, on your branch, give an offering tonight if the Lord has prospered you. And I know God has prospered you and blessed you and kept you in your job. We want to honor him. We want to thank him. I want you to go ahead tonight and do what you can to support the work of the Lord and ensure that the church of the living God is always taken care of. And uh, would, would, you, would you let me know you're going to go ahead and give tonight? Let me see those hearts. Anybody who's going to give or you say amen, you're going to support the work of the Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for anybody who's going to give something. You can do it online. Thank you, thank you. Can I see a bit more? Anyone who will give something, whatever you give will go a long way to supporting the ministry. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for everyone who will do something tonight to support the work of the Lord. I challenge you in Jesus' name. Let's do something together. Thank you, thank you. And I see more hands, more hearts that will give and support the work of God. God bless you. God bless you. I'm praying for your offering in advance. I pray the power of God, the might of God, the anointing of God be released. I pray God will give you, will multiply your gift and will give you a hundredfold and will give it back to you, will open a door for you in the name of Jesus as you support the work of the Lord tonight. I proclaim the blessing of the Lord is upon you in Jesus' mighty name. Receive that grace in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name. And I hope this service has been a blessing to you. And we thank you. And uh, I hope you have learned something. We continue to teach on Wednesday and on Friday. Join us on Friday. We'll be doing prayer. Friday we don't teach, but we pray. We have <clears throat> just in one hour of prayer where we engage in prayer. But this Saturday at 2 p.m., we have a special service for all the ladies. All the ladies that are watching here, would you let me know you are there. All the ladies, shout your amen right there, ladies. In the name of the Lord, we have all CAA ladies. We have, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Sister and I. God bless you. Thank you. Can I see any more ladies that are there? Sister Tanya, God bless you, my friend. In the U.S., God bless you. Uh, you can also join, Sister Tanya, if you want. It will be on Zoom, so we can open it up. And my wife is here, and she is saying yes. I'm reading her face. She's saying, yeah, we can join in all the ladies. You can tell ladies that this Saturday we have a powerful service for ladies on Zoom. It won't be on live stream. If you want the details, just send us a request. We'll send you the details for Zoom. We will increase our Zoom so we'll have uh, a lot of spaces. We're increasing it so we have a lot of numbers. Thank you, all the ladies. Thank you, Sister Maslin. Thank you, CA Newport. Thank you. Thank you for everyone who is coming. Thank you, Sister uh, Precious. Thank you. God bless you. We appreciate you all. We want you to know that Saturday, 2 p.m., there will be a special ladies' service that will be on Zoom. And Sunday morning, we are back here. Lord willing, I'll be preaching the word of the Lord this Sunday morning. And uh, I believe God will bless every one of us. And Sunday night, we have Brother Keith. 
uh, from CA Newcastle will be bringing the word uh, Sunday at 5 p.m. God bless you. And we want you to know we love you and thank you so much for your support. And if you want prayer, when the broadcast is cut off, you can call in and we'll pray for you. Thank you so much. Love you and see you in the next broadcast in Jesus' name. Be blessed.